Okay. Can I please invite the third speaker, Mohammed Samu Alam. Um, Mohammed is a PhD candidate in biostatistics uh, from NC State, and he's going to speak with us about a data-driven approach to single-cell transcriptomic analysis of broadly neutralizing antibody. Looking forward to your talk. Thank you. Uh, it's been uh, more than four decades. Researchers from all over the world is looking for something to eradicate this uh, HIV pandemic. Me, along with my co-authors, uh, making another attempt to find, characterize something that we expect that are capable of neutralizing many variants of uh, HIV virus. Uh, the project I've been working on is single cell transcriptomic differential expression analysis of HIV broadly neutralizing B cells in humans. I feel privileged to welcome you all in my talk, and I would like to introduce the problem I'm working on. This is the picture that uh, depicts uh, many of the aspects of the study design uh, I'm looking at. We have individuals that belong to two groups that we call case and control. Each of the subjects in these two groups go through uh, single cell uh, sequencing. And after pre-processing the single cell data, we obtain a subject-specific read count matrix for each of the subjects in these two groups. Note that each of these matrix has same number of rows that represent number of genes we are looking at, but the number of columns of these matrices are different because different subjects we may have different number of cells. When we merge these matrices, it becomes a very large data set, and we have to deal with all the genes in differential expression analysis. That gives us a big data set and requires special methods to overcome the computational challenge. Recent publications suggest that if we summarize gene subject specific probability distributions, then the problem reduces to compare a two sets of probability distribution as we have two groups of people. The hypothesis we are looking at, the distribution of gene K, is same for individual in the case, which is HIV positive uh, individuals, and the control group, which is uh, consists of HIV negative individual groups. The data we have consists of uh, B cells from seven subjects. Four of them belongs to the HIV positive groups, and three of them are in the HIV negative groups. The objective of our study is to uh, characterize the gene expression profiles of B cells that produce broadly neutralizing antibodies using the single cell RNA sequence data. And the picture in the uh, top right corner of this slide, you can see why broadly neutralizing antibodies could be advantageous to deal with the HIV. There are several methods to perform the differential expression analysis. Broadly, we can categorize them, the type of data they use. There are some uh, methods that deal with the cell level data, but the problem is they ignore the subject information that we have. And potentially, they ignore the subject to subject variation while performing the differential expression analysis. On the other hand, the individual level data, they actually consider this subject to subject variation and use the pairwise distances between subjects to perform the differential expression analysis. There are only two methods so far, those are called IDEAS and BSDE, that were recently proposed in the literature to perform differential expression analysis for this type of data. However, these two methods have some shortcomings, such as they depends on the permutation test to get the uh, p-values for this hypothesis testing problem, which requires computationally, becomes computationally expensive because the data set is very large. Also, one of the method, BSD, that involves with the tuning parameters that is sensitive with the results is sensitive with the values of this uh, uh, tuning parameter and there were no uh, recommendation how to select these uh, tuning parameters. The author explained several possibilities for different values of this tuning parameter and reported the results. And also these methods, there were no uh, theoretical properties of these methods. So we choose two methods from functional data analysis, which is a branch of statistics that deals with the data 
that are that comes as uh, uh, functions, and I choose two methods: function uh, Frechet analysis of variance and Frechet regressions. These methods are uh, actually dealt with probability distribution functions. These are functions, but these functions have some special characteristics, like they are always positive, and if we integrate them, we will have uh, value one. So their nature is a little bit different from any arbitrary function, so we need a special method to deal with them. To assess the performance of these individual level methods, we conducted a small scale simulation study where I used the splatter algorithm, which is a recently proposed method to generate single cell data, but I modified two steps of this method just to accommodate the different features of our single cell data. The factors you can see, we consider outlier genes, biological coefficient of variation, dropout, differentially expressed genes, and the subject effect in the data. This is a snapshot of the scenarios I looked for. You can see the left panel shows the sub uh, cells with respect to the differentially expression genes. The right panel, the genes are not differentially expressed. And the scenario one, which is the top panel, which is less complicated to identify the differential expression genes, but the scenario two is more complicated to identify the differential expression genes. The table two shows the accuracy, precision, and recall for these four methods in the simulation study I did in these two scenarios. Uh, they are comparable, our new two methods, uh, Frechet analysis of variance and Frechet regression, they have similar uh, results and at some points in some uh, uh, criterion they have uh, better results, for example, recall. And the hypothesis I tested in this in a, for this simulation study, I use a level of significance uh, 5%. I would like to move to the B cell data that I used in my study. Uh, before applying these four methods, uh, we uh, perform a, a quality control for our data sets because of the nature of the single cell data. These are the criteria I used to filter out the cells and genes to avoid the low quality genes and uh, cells that might have like more than one, two cells or uh, it's like mitochondrial cell. And I also analyzed this data for overall B cells and considering different subcell types of the B cells. Uh, these figures show the results of the four methods for our B cells data. The left figure shows the top genes that found uh, differentially expressed in the HIV positive and HIV negative groups by these four methods. The bar color shows the p-values, and the bar height is actually shows the difference in these two groups in terms of the log scales, and the dominance of the gene expression is represented by the border of the bar. So some of the genes we found that are like the expression is higher in the HIV-positive groups, and for some genes that is lower in the HIV-positive groups. The Venn diagram in the right uh, panel is showing the number of genes we found differentially expressed in these two groups by different methods and how many genes we found mutually by more than one methods. So as you can see, two methods, those are belongs to the functional data analysis, they found 37 genes mutually in our B cells data. The subcell types analysis, I'm skipping this one from this presentation. So these are the uh, genes that we found differentially expressed for the HIV positive and HIV negative uh, individuals. And we are uh, looking forward to investigate these genes for their function and the impact on the HIV further. And maybe we are looking to perform a downstream pathway analysis for these genes to know more about these genes and to characterize the broadly neutralizing antibodies and their connection with this. I would like to uh, thank my collaborators for these projects, uh, Helen, Madison, Lynn, and Kevin, and uh, the Burton from CHAVD, and the Wilton from DHPA Sequencing Core. And finally, I'd like to thank CIFAR because they offered me the internship and I was able to work on these projects. And thanks Cleveland especially for offering this internship uh, second time, and I've been working in DO from the NCS state two times. And thank you all for listening to me. These are the some references I used uh, for this analysis, and I'd be happy to take questions. Thank you. 
Is there any questions from the audience? Gosh, there's a lot of uh, statistical jargons that you can you can you. I'm a little confused because you mentioned transcriptomic expression, differential expression in people with neutralizing antibody, but your the case and controls are non-HIV and healthy uh, HIV and healthy subjects. How does that have anything to do with neutralizing antibodies uh, analysis? Yes, that's a great question. Yeah, I had this uh, question at the beginning of uh, the project I started. The B cells are collected from the HIV positive individuals, and then the sequence data was matched with the, some clone B cells that collected from the uh, subject that showed uh, broadly neutralizing antibodies. So the data we are actually considering in our project, they are actually cloned with the B cells of the subjects, they showed broadly neutralizing behavior in their uh, uh, HIV positive history. So the data we are expecting that this data is similar to the data of B cells of the uh, individual who had the broadly neutralizing antibody. So based on the differentially expressed genes we, are f we found in our analysis, we'll try to characterize the broadly neutralizing antibodies. So that's the uh, feature works we're looking for to investigate these genes and to perform their pathway analysis. Is healthy control the appropriate control group for that? Yeah, that's a nice question. And we considered some covariates for these subjects, like we have uh, both male and female in our data sets. And we are considering subjects from uh, age of like from 18 to 48. So we do have this available information about the subjects and in the analysis, in case of one of the methods, which is stretched regression, we actually uh, use those covariates just to control uh, from these uh, confounding factors. So in future, hopefully, we'll be able to develop some, uh, uh, we are limited in this number of background factors, but hopefully this will control the uh, confounding factors in our analysis. Thank you. Yeah.